In tonight's video, I will tie this emerger with the split wing technique uh, with a trailing shock that's a little bit tapered. It has a little feature over here that I think it's a little bit unique, not necessarily indispensable, but I think it's good to have it and it's not very difficult to tie it. As you can see, I was using these flies, so I'll just jump into tying and let's do it fast. So for this fly I'm going to use two CDC feathers for the wings. I will use partridge feather as well. For the body I'm going to use turkey bayat in brown. I'm going to use 30 denier uh, GSP thread and I'm going to use a little bit of Antron in ginger variant and for the thorax part I'm going to use squirrel dubbing mix. Now before I start tying I'm going to explain to you how I'm tying these wings and what kind of CDC feather uh, you're supposed to be looking for. And notice the shape of this feather it's not oval it's diamond shape or triangular shape. If you take a look at my previous videos about CDC of a couple of months ago you will you will know why I like these feathers. Uh, I'll just make it short. I like these feathers because most most of the barbules are actually going all the way to the tips. So when you just stroke those barbules like this, you're gonna actually use up almost all feather. Now, for this technique, I saw it as a kid uh, from Oliver Edwards' videos, and I'm just going to cut the stem over here and leave the shape in the feather. Same I'm going to do with the partridge feather later. So let's just get into tying. Uh, hook is going to be 2487 size 14 TMCO. Barbless. Use barbless because they harm fish less but then they go through the fish's mouth bones easier than barbed hooks and it's more fair to use them. Fish doesn't fall off that easy as people, some people think. So I'm going to start the thread right about where I want my body to end and thorax to begin. So right about here. Since I'm using GSP thread, I have to do a little bit more turns as you can see, so the thread won't slip away or un unwind. So now before I proceed, I, I have to prepare one of these bio tips and I also did it in one of my videos about bites so I'm just going to use for this longer bite here even though I can go away with the shorter ones that are uh, closer to the root of the bite but it's easier to tie with the longer ones I'll try to do it so you can see it so we have shiny side and the uh, let's call it dull side here. I'm just gonna cut along the length of this and I'm just gonna make it a little bit more narrow. So I'll do it a little bit away from the camera guys, sorry for that. Now you can see what I got, more narrow by it. And now it's time to tie trailing shuck and the way I'm doing it and the reason why I'm using this color is long ago my friend told me that like mo most shucks would have this color. It's hitting, it has to do something with like these shucks, not sure. Uh, my friend is like very uh, careful when he's... Wait a second, I have to go a little bit down the hook. Uh, my, my friend is very detail oriented, so whatever he says I rarely doubt, like he's a physicist, super smart guy, uh, whatever he does, he does with a lot of care and uh, that's why I don't doubt his questions and, and his decisions very often. So we are just creating ball here and this ball will provide us a tapered shock, doesn't look like a shock now yet. So just with a velcro or something for brushing out, just brush out this ball and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm getting actually a shock that's more durable 
the fish will actually won't, won't be able to destroy it completely and even if it does rub the teeth against it it's actually going to pull away more fibers and it's gonna make more and more of the shuck so the front part is the head part where the the, the body breaks through the, the shock and goes away emerges and goes out and emerges so this is the reason why the, this part here is the thickest so I'm just going to go through it a little bit more uh, you don't have to dab antrum very tightly actually it's counterproductive so dab it very loosely now it's time to attach by it as I was saying just the facing down the, the shiny side we cut out cut out and go away with your thread all the way to the entrance now it's time to create a little bit of taper over here and i'm gonna stop just about here i need a bit space for my thorax and wings so i'll just go back and forth just a few times Make a smooth underbody, that's very important. I'm going to twist counterclockwise my thread to flatten it out. Even though it's very thin, it can make an uneven surface, which is not desirable for this kind of bodies. We, you need smooth underbody for this fly, because when I add super glue in my next step, it will actually stick for the bite much better. For the super glue, I prefer to use gel, because it's easier to work with. And uh, the thin one, the liquid one, it's very difficult to, to control around, so I'm not using it very often. My needle is already stuck with this super glue, but never mind. So let me just take take out its new pack, so I have to be careful now. Okay, here it comes. Just take a little bit. This is already too much, but never mind easy it's easy to to remove the excess with gel and the gel is good because it won't soak into the antron if i if i used the thin one it would just soak through all materials here and it would destroy everything i just did so gel is the way to go okay clean the tip of the needle even though it's like useless now now take heckle pliers heckle pliers so just be careful don't break anything here now you will notice that as you wind towards the hook eye you will make those segments which is very cool effect uh, and you will notice that i'm pushing in front of the bayet and pushing the super glue which means that I'm distributing distributing it uh, along the, the hook. So that's okay. You notice that I did just two turns and that's it. Now I'm just gonna lock everything into place. Now it's time to do the wings just for the sake of not rotating and stuff i'm gonna make this layer of thread now you should use not necessarily uh, two cdc feathers that are I, I just aligned two tips there that are very similar in size and shape take them by the tips stroke back those fibers now the length of first barbules here is actually going to be the length of your wings shortest possible length this is going to be longer of course uh, so that's what you're looking for you need you if, you if you just do it here like if you stroke back here and tie in here everything is going to be too short so choose the barbules that are going to be long as you want your wings to be or longer because it's easier to cut everything down now after you do this Okay, snip away. 
same I will do with partridge okay so this is the length of the wings I'll give it a few go inside with your scissors cut it now place partridge feather first because you want partridge feather to be facing towards you so no pressure Oop, that's it it bounced okay now you don't need too much here move it away it's going to be in your way now we prepared CDC so do the same with CDC, two loose wraps and then pull them. Let me see if I, I think I just slide, slided one feather. Yes, I did. So I didn't pull evenly on both. Anyway, two loose wraps and then that's it. Now I'm going to place it on the top of the hook like so and then I'll hold everything and pull down with my bobbin very hard do a couple of more wraps here and then locking wraps in front now cut away only one feather and it's the top one you need the bottom one to fold over now I need to use some dubbing here for the thorax and the dubbing, just add a little, not too much, but try to use the spiky one and don't wrap it too tightly because you need those legs to stick out or you will brush them away, that's also fine. So as you will see as I wind it down, I didn't make a proper dubbing noodle, I just did it loosely. But because I'm using GSP I can actually apply more pressure and lock down all those materials to stick on my hook. So I'm just using a lot of pressure. This is a little bit harder to do if you're using uh, very small hooks like size 20 or, or, or smaller because you will maybe bend the hook. Okay, that's it. Remove the excess. Now with your thumb, push all those materials forward uh, sorry backwards and divide and you will see if you divided it properly just when you do this pull a little bit they will stay in the position then check everything from all sides if you're satisfied you can proceed and just pull them away pull them apart like so take your time for this you want your flight to be symmetrical now push this feather forward and pull those feathers back and you will see what you got now you don't have to hold this one just go pinch and wrap a couple of times like this now ch check everything for the last time now everything is fine and then pull those wings in the position that you want and pull GSP very firmly and then blocking turns in front it's time to cut away this part here it's like complete excess here okay I'll just cut those butt ends a little bit more now you I could have just locked it folded back and then cut it so I would hide this but it's okay because I will hide it with the uh, uh, well, uh, turns of thread right now. It's thin thread, so as you can see, I'm not building any build up here. Now we finish, and with the whip, whip finishing fly, don't form your fly before we finish, form it with whip finish. That's how you're actually preventing the build up of the head. So I'm trying to catch all those stray fibers. If I don't catch them all, I won't be bothered. It's important that I have the hook eye clean and clear. 
So as you can see, I almost caught all of them. This fly is not going to be some competition fly for like beauty contest. It's going to catch your fish, guys. Uh, use thin tippets, delicate presentations. You can use this on very slow waters or or on relatively fast ones. Uh, just uh, do the number of feathers for the wings accordingly because more rough water, more feathers you will need. I wouldn't go more than three feathers. Uh, well, also, it's not the most uh, cost-effective fly when it comes to cost of your CDC, but it's very, very effective fly when it comes to fishing. Now, I don't like to cut my wings with uh, scissors because it doesn't look natural. Like, I just like to do this. I, I go slide my fingers down them, like so, and then just where I want them to, to, to end, I just pinch away everything with my nail. I just do this, and that's it. As you can see, it looks nice, looks decent. This fly is supposed to go submerged all the way, so you should see just wings. The body and the trailing shark should be underwater or laying low. Uh, the, the attacks on the fly are not very violent, they're more subtle. And that's it. You, I'm using this one from size, let's say 16 to size 12, not, not larger than that. Uh, the reason why I'm not using the super small ones, it's like because it's too much to like it's overkill to do this on like size 20. I mean, it looks pretty, but it's too much troublesome, I think, to, to make it on small flies. It takes too much time sometimes, and I like more efficiency oriented when I'm tying those flies. Uh, so, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, consider sharing it, commenting down below, and see you next time.